We'll call this Common Council meeting in order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk call roll, please. Evans? Here. Cooley? Here. Stratton? Here. Reynolds? Here. Machka? Here. Burnley? Here. Okay, first item of business is the agenda approval. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as read? Or as printed? So moved. Second. Motion by Murrow, second by Gray. Any further discussion? Yeah, I would uh, like to make a motion to change the agenda to take out resolution 19 2024, 23 2024, and 24 2024. And that being because there's not adequate times with the uh, rather lengthy resolution 1920-24 to read this. I know I just received it yesterday on email and I got about halfway through it. And uh, there are some things in here that need to be addressed and uh, for discussion. And I think we should put those, re those resolutions on hold to a further date, be it two weeks, a week or two weeks until we can get those resolved, which I'll go through later. Um, some of them have to do with um, some clarifications in the contract. And it is a legally binding contract, so there's, I know I have a lot of questions on that I don't think we'll be able to take care of tonight. And, you know, so uh, some of them are the fact that it takes the Common Council a lot of the equation for continuing after the, if there's any excess monies, the common council is, does not have the right to question that. It goes to the mayor and the city clerk. Or city, yeah, city clerk. And uh, that's in the second to last paragraph. Um, and I don't think the common council should ever be legally taken out of any kind of uh, spending. And as borrowing in this spend, is spending because they're taking debt onto the city. And you know, I know I could not vote for this as long as that's in there. And uh, there's a couple other things also that uh, one is up on the farther pop is to call for the uh, acquisition of a fire truck. And I know it's a repair, but this is a 14 year note. And this is gonna stand for 14 years. And as far as I know, we have not come up with any acquisition of a fire truck. That was, that was fixed. Yeah? That was, that was fixed on the new resolution. Yeah. It is fixed. Correct. It was you for the refurbish. It was the, we just fixed that late yesterday. It was for the refurbishment of a fire truck. So that's okay. in your packet. In, in here? Yes. Okay, because it wasn't on, the, on this, what you sent out. Right, because we didn't have that updated until yesterday. Okay, because I don't know what was that last night. Or this morning, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want to repeat your motion? We've got to get into the discussion part of the okay of your motion. To change the agenda to take out resolution 19 2024, 23 2024, and 24 24, and to act on those as a later at a later date. Whenever the, the council would decide to have another meeting. The kids said it was. 1920, 24, you're starting. 19, 19 20, 23, 23, and 24. Because I know I, just for the first couple of pages, some of the stuff I found, then I have serious questions about, and like, well, that is, that is clarified now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Rungi, second by Moros. Any further discussion? I guess I'll turn to the city attorney if there's anything that he can. Well, you have the right to put it off to another meeting. Um, you know, if you want to study it some more, you don't have to either. It's up to you. Wouldn't those resolutions just fail if they failed when we got to them on the agenda? We're voting on it to either vote yes or no on an amendment before we get to it on an agenda. Right. He's acting to act right, but to he's acting to yeah, remove to it, so it doesn't preemptively get voted. remove it before we can discuss exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Next, this stuff gets corrected. 
we can still we can still discuss and vote. Well, we can yeah we can do that too. But you know this is there are things that are going to have to be clarified in those. I think that maybe we should very, give very Justin yes. an opportunity to go through those things. I'm thinking we're well. on a timeline for this borrowing, correct, Justin? Another that month could have a dramatic yeah. effect on it. We'll push it back. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, motion and second. I'll call the question. Roll call vote, please. Uh, the original Murrows. Oh, I would say the. Amendment. Well, I Wrong. think we have to first. Do that. Which which motion do we vote on first? The amendment. That he's, he the one that yeah. Jim. Removing. Jim right. Right. He's okay. removing all that he's removing all, all okay. the so resolutions. I. Burroughs? Aye. Evans? No. Booty? No. Grattan? I remove it. Say yes? Yeah. Uh, much talk? No. Split. So I'm going to vote in the affirmative to to leave it as is, and then I'll take uh, I'll take these resolutions as they come. I don't want to jeopardize our borrowing at this time, so I guess we can shoot them down individually as they come, rather than remove them from the agenda. Back. Okay. Any other discussion? Any other questions, comments? Seeing none. Approve the agenda as printed. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Aye. That's two? Two no's? I would you say voted? no. Okay. But I know I motioned it, so I know you know I'm feeling like <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. Moving on. Um, we've got approved minutes of previous meetings. Any questions or comments on the previous meeting? See none. The motion approved. So moved. Motion by Foody. Is there a second? Second. Second by Muchka. Any further discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Approved minutes of intervening means? So moved. Motion by Foody. Second. Second by Evans. Any further discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Public comment regarding agenda items. We have a couple guests in the audience here. You wish to speak? Yeah. This will be the only time you'll be allowed to speak for okay. anything. So, <laughs> so uh, I own 1850s, as many of you know. My concern is the construction. I was at the initial meeting when it was decided what was going to happen, and I was here, and I recorded the meeting because he wasn't here, and he likes to know what's going on, too. And my understanding then based on the recording is that they would use, they might have to dig up half of the intersection on my corner of the business so that they can link things together. Makes sense, okay. And that every night there was gonna be left open unless it's obviously concrete and that needs to cure. However, that's not always the case. And my other concern that I brought up at the chamber meeting and I talked to the mayor is we had Brett come to the meeting as well as public safety and as far as I'm concerned plan B got approved the mayor said he never saw um, the distances and whatnot so on page 55 of what Brett shared when he came to the meeting it's there um, but according to the guys on the street working they have no idea of anything with the chamber so I don't know how to get this approved that they understand that what's happening right now to me and my business is not what I agreed to, what I understood was going to happen with the city, with the construction. Because I've come in where my sewer is dug up and for 10 days there's a excavator sitting on top preventing people from falling in. Um, the intersection is not open every single night. Um, I have pictures to show what it looked like today where Fair Street is closed, where downtown is closed. Obviously, the rest of it, um, Oak Street is closed. There's literally no way for customers to get to me if they wanted to come. You have 
the road closed at the end of the street. It's not appealing to new customers or existing customers to know that it's okay for them to come closer. So I am down significantly with business. I don't feel like the construction crew is holding up their end of the bargain. I feel violated <laughs> with what's happening because my block is going to get redone again next year. So I dealt with it last year. I'm dealing with it this year, and I knew that they were going to tear up some of the lateral lines, but they've left it. They've completed that work. I don't know why they did it now, but they've completed that work, and it's going to sit for at least another month with gravel passing with people that are driving, the trucks driving. It looks nasty. Oh, I don't want to drive it. I'm constantly looking for another route to get to my business, and I have to get to my business. And if I don't want to do it, why would customers want to do it? So I talked to the city workers from Department of Public Works that were out there today, and I've asked, is there any way that we can clean this up like more regularly so that you know there isn't um, you know six inch drop where the laterals were replaced and gravel all over the road that's destroying the cars because the city's not going to pay for that damage right unless we sue you <laughs> but I mean it looks awful it should not be left like that I have pictures even of tonight how it was left you have gaps where you know if somebody misses the turn, I mean, if it's not perfectly lined up, they're going to bottom out. It's awful. So I don't know how to, one, get these plans that I thought were already approved. Plan B was approved, not the one that I personally wanted. I wanted the reverse parking, but the city approved plan B. So how is it that they have no idea that next year this is happening? Why was my sewer done this year if they're going to have to completely redo it next year? I don't understand. Help me understand. I'll try to answer some of them. First of all, your sewer wasn't dug. Your sewer goes up the, the other side of the building. It's your water that, that, that was handled underneath the, the funding that there was no cost to you from the property line in. So from the property line to the main, the city has a December 31st deadline to get that completed this year. So all the lead has to be out of the system by December 31st. So that's the issue you're talking about. I agree with you totally as far as they could do a much better job grooming the, the area at the end of the day. Um, there is a lot of excess gravel in that intersection. I've talked to a couple of the, the workers along there and they always refer you to somebody else. So. I will put another call in to Jason Lau from MSA, our contracted engineer, and say, hey, we've got to do a little bit better job. Um, I do not have easy access in and out of my place as well. You know, I've got a storm drain that's elected to be put right in my driveway approach now. So that cuts down about at least 25% of my driveway opening there, and we're kind of maneuvering around a barrel and whatever. Luckily, I have a rear yard access to get out on the fair street, but uh, they could do a lot better, and I will see what we can do to make that better, especially uh, well, especially you operating a business on the corner there. It does make it hard. So. Well, as you know, most of my regular customers, as well as my employees, they typically park across the street in Tim's parking lot. We don't have access to that right now. There's some trailer blocking from the back end, and there's no access going from the front end either. Uh, I've also asked the city if they could, instead of having the road closed at the end of the block, to move it in, like in front of my building where the construction will stop, versus having it at the other end of the road. Because it's still visible that there's construction. So to make it look more appealing, to clean it up, and all the apartments are not parking in the public parking, they're parking on the side of fair. So literally my customers have nowhere they can go. I can't even tell them to go by Tim. There's no access to go in by Tim. So I don't I don't know what to do. I have a question. Sure. Who is they, the, the the contractor has a contract with the city, right? Correct. There is a general contractor, right? right? And general contractor has to follow the rules that are within the contract. Who's looking at the contract? And who's looking at the at the contractor's 
performance and holding them up to the up to that contract. MSA does have an inspector out there. Okay, that sits in the car or does something. Who's holding them up to the contract is my question. Not who's sitting out there and overlooking the things that who's on their phone. Accountable? While MSA they're is ultimately accountable for the performance of the contractor. On the job. Didn't we always have a project contact? I thought we we're always given somebody that yeah. was a main contact. Yeah. We have both contacts for the general contractor as well as MSA, but the chain of command would be, yeah, your complaint should funnel through MSA. So is MSA in groups, your opinion, holding up to their end of the bargain is my question. I would say at times it's a little lax. Okay, well maybe that lax should be changed. Yeah. Well, we'll look into it. Dave, do you have anything to say, Chief Police, as far as parking situations or? I'm aware of these issues. No one's reached out to me about any of it, so. I will say most of the people along Oak Street are staying off the street, you know, the blocks east of your, your business. They're not parking on the street, but like you said, there's our tenants in upper buildings that probably consume the spaces on, on Fair Street, and I guess we don't have a winter moratorium, you know, so that they have to have to leave at any certain hours or what have I mean, so I guess they, yeah. My, my, I, I know that there's not going to be anything changed about what's happening downtown right now. Mm -hmm. But then the next project, it's going to be the same exact thing yep. if it's not being held up to it. And uh, it seems to me the city is looking for ways to save the money on getting these contracts completed, which actually they're not because the contractors are charging just as much, if not more, I know I've been a contractor and I did work like this and these kind of projects are gravy projects. So the city of Juneau should be holding up these contractors to a higher standard. With the funding that we're receiving, they are actually required to pay their help even more money on these jobs where we do receive votes. But that doesn't help the city. That doesn't help the people that live within the city. The money's leaving the town, and they are making it harder for us to live in it. I just thought that there was always a contact number that we could give them. That wasn't Jason Mao, it was the project contact. You know, somebody's got a problem getting out of their driveway, they call the project contact. Mm -hmm. I think that's what would be very helpful. That would be for the them. general contractor. And I think if we could get them that project contact, they could say, hey, you know, we can't get in, we can't get out. They need to have that contact. Have you received calls down here at City Hall? The, the problem with me is I'm no longer where I'm sitting at my business and watching them work. So yeah, but I don't... Somebody should have it, I would think. Right, but it's like my bartenders don't know when it's okay and when it's not okay. Like, it's not their responsibility to make right. sure that there's access to the building. Like, that is the contractor's responsibility, exactly. and that comes from the city saying, hey, you guys agreed to leave access to the business. I open at 11. Mm -hmm. I have to have my patio done, closed off until they stop working at 5 o'clock. I understand. So it's very confusing. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm reinvesting back into my business, not from my business funds. I'm reinvesting from my personal funds to keep the place afloat at That's this point. That's what I'm trying to get to, though, is, you know, we need a way to contact But, the, the but what you're asking me to do is I need to pull up my cameras and see, okay, did they leave access? Oh, did can you know, like, <laughs> I have to be on guard all the time and, like, report every time they, they leave it bad. Like, it should just be that they do their job. And I agree with you 100%. You know, we, we've had a problem with MSA with the same problem on how many other street projects. Oak Street, the people, were, they never were notified when stuff was going to be closed off. When they did Center Street originally, how many years ago, I don't remember, we had the same problem. MSA never follows up with what they're saying. At the end of the day, when they're done at 5 o'clock, that street should be passable and drivable. Yeah. So and the answer to my question it. is no. 
Nobody's holding them up to uh, to their. Right. Is there? Nobody's holding them accountable. Right. And, and you know, the MSA is the one that has to be held accountable because they're doing it. So can somebody and I? And you may have you know, Lau's phone number. I keep want to call Mike Lau, but it's Jason. Oh yeah. Jason. Yeah. Can you get them their phone number? And give it to them and let them, you know, and you can call and I don't know if the mayor or. Mayor I, mean, I, I think that you know the, we can place a call. Yeah. Or the, or I, the, I think I think that would be people. the way it should be. It should not be coming from from us. Yeah, uh, I am not because the it's going to be a, a being that we're just complainers and yeah. let's get rid of them. Right. Uh, the the plans that she was mentioning, I know that that's not a part of this whatsoever or this construction whatsoever. It's something that we wanted to do in the future. And I really, really wanted to see downtown change and look different. And I, after seeing how, how things operate, I have no drive to put any effort into helping this thing change. Yeah. And it's sad. So you guys take it however you want. We're gonna survive. We'll, we'll move on, things will get done, but if MSA year after year is not doing their part of the job, well, you guys as council need to do something about it. Yep. That is what I'm saying here. Point well taken. Dave, I would ask you to reach out to Public Works too. Maybe they could do a little bit of the street sweeper down there to groom up at least Fair Street and clean up some of that that's not affected by the construction. Cause that dust and dirt goes all over the place. Okay, any other comments tonight? See you on communication. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, Thanks for stuff. Communications. Any communications? Crew payments of bills. Checks for two million one hundred nineteen thousand seven hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy cents. Electronic transfers one hundred ninety-two thousand seven hundred forty-three dollars and twenty-six cents. Motion approved. Uh, payment of it. So moved. Motion by Merles. Second. Second by Grattan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Merles? Aye. Grattan? Aye. Evans? Aye. Booty? Aye. Mushka? Aye. Barney? Aye. Next we have reports of officials. Mayor. Resolution 18, 2024, approved mayor, Oriel appointments. Whereas the mayor has diligently searched for individuals willing to give up themselves by serving on the cable TV board, CDA, library board, recreation committee, and the board of appeals. And whereas the mayor wishes to make the following appointments. Cable TV board, Neil Whiting, term expires nine to 27. Uh, library board, Jean Hahn, term expires seven to 27. Library Board, Wendy Jo Schmiedma, term expires 7 of 27. Recreation Committee, Amy Walters, her term expires 8 of 2027. CDA, Kurt Ferrari, term ends 9 of 2027. Board of Appeals, John Schuster, 5 of 2027. And now, therefore, it be resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau afford, accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of this city of Juneau, this 11th day of June, 2024. Is there a motion to approve the resolution 18, 2024? So moved. Motion by Morose. Is second. there a second? Second by Butchka. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Evans? Or excuse me, Morose. Aye. Butchka? Aye. Evans? Aye. Booty? Aye. Bratton? Aye. Bruggy? Aye. Resolution 18, 2024 is passed. Anything from the clerk treasurer tonight? I have anything. Written reports. Any questions on the building permit report, the police department report, Juno Fire and Rescue report, or the Juno EMS report? Reports of committees, commissions, and boards. Library board. Cheetah, you want to go forward here? Cheetah. That's a Oh, that's a, okay. It's, a, it's kind of a, a hot mess. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs>
All right, so you saw me come in, but yes, this is our summer reading mascot, Sussacass the Sasquatch. And our theme for the summer reading program, which lasts through June and July, is Adventure Begins at Your Library. So there you are. I don't know. You're on safari or something. but. Um, so with that said, we have had a bumper uh, regi registration number. So far we have 165 people signed up. We have a lot of parents signing up with their children, which really delights my heart because one of the best role models for a child to read over the summer is to see um, moms and dads and grandparents reading side them. So we are launching our Seeking Sussacus um, scavenger hunt this week and I have hidden um, the mascot's favorite toy somewhere in Juno and each week this will change where it goes. If you scan the QR code then you're entered into a drawing for such things as this. Yeah, it's a Bigfoot, um, emergency Bigfoot collar. So, and some other things in there too. So we're having a lot of fun with this theme. And each week, uh, once you enroll, you actually get a passport. And we take your passport photo. Oh my goodness, your passport photo. We put it in here with our little Polaroid camera, and um, that has been really popular with the kids too, to go get their passport photo. Each week they participate, they um, get a stamp in their passport, just like real passports. So we're having fun with that theme, and each week they actually get a travel ticket. This ticket, if you participate, you're going on safari. Last week they went on a plane ride. And so we're just having adventure all summer long. I just wanted to list a few things coming up in June. I will be exiting on Friday, June 20th. <laughs> I know it's been, it's been fun. <laughs> to monthly come and tell you how important this city is and how what you accomplish here actually benefits your city. I know you take your responsibility with your taxpayer dollars um, seriously. Every dollar matters, but what you invest in your city through programs that don't make money matters. Because when 165 people register for summer reading and children learn to read and love to read and parents take responsibility for that, your city thrives. So don't don't change what you do. Every decision you make here around this table is important and um, it impacts your employees, but it impacts your city. And hopefully it impacts the crime rate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stay home and read books, kids, right? All right, so we have Kim's Amazing Animals coming to the library tomorrow. And um, we have the Dodge County Dairy Promotion Ambassador coming to the library next uh, week on Monday. And the kids and adults, too, are going to make their own ice cream. And then I don't know if you've ever had the enjoyment of hearing Charlie Craves speak. He owns Craves Cheese and um, apparently is quite an entertaining so he is coming to the library the evening of Monday, June 24th to promote, of course, in June, Dairy Month, cheese. There will be Crave Brothers cheese available, but I guess he just puts on a very entertaining show as well. 
So lots of things coming up in June at the Juno Public Library. And I am just going to pass around some entry forms. Everybody take one. And um, before you leave today, guess how many things are in that guessing jar. Uh, if you have the closest guess, you win said contents. Counted by yours truly. Um, with gloves on, so you can eat it. Um, and then the tiebreaker is how many green M&Ms are in there. So uh, hopefully you have writing utensils. But it has been a fun ride. I also um, want to announce that Connie Shewitt, your former director before you hired um, me, is coming back to the Juno Public Library. And she will start employment on Monday, June 24th. And, um, she handed over a wonderful library that was supported by you and now i get to hand it back to her and say um it's still wonderful and there's still people in this community that care so all right thanks again for everything you guys and for what you do and how you support your library and thank you yeah You Jeanette, can't keep Jeanette it. Jeanette had a very nice and formal, I don't want to say the send off, but yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody yeah. got to stop in and say their appreciation for her service all day long. And my yeah. wife and her reminisced about the days they used to do jazz. Days of jazzers, <laughs> In the old yeah. drugstore up there. It shows <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but no, Jeanette, you've been an outstanding person to work with, and I really let. <laughs> There's big shoes to fill after you leave here because I don't think it'll ever be the same. I think you've always been, you're one of a kind. And one of a kind. We're happy yeah. to have you for the last six and a half years. So. <laughs> it, Another it's, one. It's been a blessing. Thank you. Oh, next we have Land Commission. David. Land Commission. We did meet. We uh, were sent notice that a gentleman had started working on the fence in his yard. So we, on the 541 North Main, and we sent him the building codes requiring the two foot setback from the sidewalk and side lot lines and how high it could be in the front and the, that it would need uh, plan commission approval because it's in the front yard. So. We sent that off to them. Um, we reviewed site plans for Glass Floss Industries uh, for the new addition that they're going to put on the east side of the property. Um, we made it contingent on reducing an east setback from the neighbor's lot line from 25 feet to 15 feet on a conditional use permit, um, which they are working on the paperwork for that conditional use permit. So we, that we can uh, give that to them. Uh, we also discussed the signs offered by Automated Pet Care, which is now Whisker, uh, for the, in the, in the two entrances of the city on 26. Um, and we are waiting to hear back from them about the, the slight change in the uh, sign that was asked about. We are reviewing the comprehensive plan from the 2030, um, working on that. So that'll, that'll take several months to get through that. Um, that well, that was our, our meeting. We also reviewed the downtown improvement that Jason Mall had presented. Oh, you weren't here. I wasn't here. All right. Well, those were forwarded to finance. Okay. So, any questions for Dave? Seeing none. Moving on. Finance. Finance. <clears throat> we met last Tuesday. Um, we talked about ARPA funds, and we talked about our proposed borrowing. And um, I think that 
first resolution is resolution 19 2024 about the borrowing and I would ask Justin Fisher of Air to make his presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me here. It's good to see so many familiar faces. Uh, so yeah, this is really just a follow up to the finance committee meeting that occurred where it was approved to move forward with financing as presented. What I'll go through tonight is that, that financing plan and answer any questions if there are any. So when you look at the presentation packet that I, I handed out, the first page on page two there is an interest rate graph. What this is showing you is kind of a historical interest rate for municipal type financing for the double A bond credit rating uh, over the last 30 years. So really when you look at 2020, you can see that interest rates dropped pretty dramatically. That was a unique period of time where COVID hit, um, the city took advantage of that and then issued some debt during that particular time. And then when that, that period was done, come 2022, end of 2022, interest rates have gone up. But when you look, look at it from a historic perspective, they're still uh, pretty much right on average from where they have been uh, over the last 30 years. So you're gonna have ebbs and flows. Interest rate volatility is extremely high right now as economic data continues to come out. Uh, CPI number is going to be released tomorrow, the Fed is speaking, you know, they probably won't make a change to the interest rate uh, uh, cuts or do anything like that. It's really going to be um, what are they going to indicate as potential opportunities in the future. Is it going to be higher for longer like they continue to say? That probably will, you know, potentially is the case. But the economy is slowing down a little bit, but not to as fast as what they hope. So uh, interest rates continue to uh, go down and then they go back up and uh, it's kind of a, a honestly a day-by-day -day basis where right now interest rates are going up and down 10 basis points pretty regularly which in our world that's that's pretty dramatic um, it's usually a couple basis points here and there so it's, it's you know when you get an opportunity to jump in the market when things are looking favorable that's when it makes sense to, to jump in and, and when you're ready and, and time is up so then going to page three here. So the estimated size, $3 million. This issue will be a general obligation promissory note. So as many of you are familiar, general obligation debt is your most secure type financing because it has an unlimited taxing authority tied to it. You can't just go ahead and issue as much general obligation debt as you want. You have a certain limit that you can only uh, use, which is 5% of your equalized valuation to it. So we'll go through that in a couple pages. So uh, based on this type financing, this will fund ideally the 2024, 25, and 2026 capital improvement projects. So essentially multiple years worth of capital improvement projects. And you can do that because if you issue less than $5 million in a calendar year, you're considered a small issuer in our world. And it makes sense. And each week, $16 billion is issued in the municipal bond world. So, $3 million is, is pretty small uh, when all things you know, considered. Um, so you're considered a small issuer, which is good in your situation because then you're allowed to uh, spend that money up to three years without worrying about the IRS coming knocking on your door saying you potentially have arbitrage rebate because you haven't spent the proceeds fast enough. There's, otherwise you would have certain spend down requirements. Right now we're in a unique time where the interest rate curve actually is higher on the short term rate. So your money market accounts and stuff like that, you're actually earning higher interest rates than on the longer term financing. Very unique world we're in right now. So you can actually invest this money if you don't need it right away at a higher interest rate than probably what we're gonna be borrowing for. Because right now the, the local government investment pool is uh, over five and a quarter for an interest rate and we potentially are going to be borrowing at, say, 4.5% or less, uh, ideally, uh, when we jump in the market when we're ready. So this will fund the CIP levy supported projects, $1,580,000, uh, fire truck refurbishment, $420,000, street improvements, uh, levy supported, $500,000, and then some utility supported projects at $500,000, which equates to that $3 million. This is going to mature March 1 of 2026 to 2039. The first interest being next year, March 1 of 2025, so you have the ability to put it on the, the levy for, for next year. 
and then it will be callable on March 1, 2031, or any date thereafter. So what does callable mean? That means when you can look at refinancing, paying it off, et cetera. So you have that flexibility in the future in case interest rates do come down, like a 2020 or some, some unique time, you then have that ability to, to bring that interest rate down lower. The estimated interest rate that you know, we're projecting, 4.50%. I, right now, if we were to jump in the market, we would be less than that, I would assume. Um, but again, interest rates are, are extremely volatile. I have no control over it. Um, if they're going to go up, they're going to go down. And ideally, when we're ready, um, that we, we jump in at a, the correct time and get below what I'm projecting here. But I'd rather be conservative in the projections than be aggressive and then have it potentially come in higher, which no one wants to see. So the max parameter interest rate is 4.75%. So if it goes basically at 4.75% or higher, that's when we wouldn't be able to move forward with the financing. And I come back to you and say, something happened in the marketplace between now and that deal, you know, if we're ready um, the next couple of weeks. You know, if all of a sudden Fed uh, Powell uh, chairman uh, comes out and says tomorrow that we expect a rate increase, That'll throw the market for a huge tizzy, and interest rates probably will go up a quarter of a percent instantly, um, pretty quick, and potentially even more. So if that's something like that happens, I'll probably want to get back in front of you and explain what's going on in the marketplace, and then we maybe want to, you know, say, hey, let's, let's hold off for a better day or um, wait for a better opportunity. But again, I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. I think we're in a good position. We, we, we you know. Again, the market is, is cooperating right now, and I guess that we would be below a 450 if we were to jump in tomorrow. So that's where we are. Going to the next page, the timeline. So finance committee considered the plan of finance on June 4th. You would consider the plan of finance and parameter resolution on June 11th, 2024. That resolution essentially, uh, again, allows you the, uh, the ability to be flexible and when we jump in the market. So if we were able to uh, get that interest rate of below 4.75%, uh, that'll give the authority to Megan or the mayor the ability to sign off on the bond sale, assuming we jump into the market and receive less than a 4.5 uh, or a 4.75%. But again, ideally we're gonna get a less than a 4.5%. So the preparations are, are currently are already in process for the issuance. We've got the official statement uh, put together. So that's essentially, I think of that as like the stock prospectus for the city. That's what's being sent out to potential bidders, investors, uh, buyers of your municipal bonds, so they can review it, look at your financials, uh, you know, what's going on in the city, your valuation growth, etc., to make an informed decision on if they want to buy your municipal bonds or, or not. And then we would request bond insurance quotes. So, uh, due to the, the the city's bond credit rating, it doesn't make sense to go for to Moody's or Standard and Poor's and pay for bond credit rating. Another option, what you can do, is you can go to bond insurance and ultimately have them provide you quotes to say, we'll insure your bonds in case you can't make a payment for whatever reason, we'll insure it to make those bond holds in full. Well, that costs something to do that. But in return, you're gonna get a lower interest rate uh, for that bond insurance. The, the cost equation you have to do is, are you gonna get lower enough lower of a lower interest rate to, to cover that, that cost for that premium for the bond insurance. And in, the, in your situation, it absolutely makes sense, especially in this market that we're in, that if you pay, say, $10,000 for insurance, or you end up saving $60,000 in interest costs by, by getting it, that's a net benefit of $50,000. So that makes sense to, to move forward with bond insurance. So that's something that we'll, we are going to evaluate throughout that process. And, uh, you know, depending on the quotes we get back, which I think we will. We've used insurance on your, your financing in the past, um, and it's made a lot of sense, and I would anticipate it making a lot of sense on this one uh, because it's a little bit longer as well. And then if the market is strong and meet council parameters, so the notes potentially the, the week of June 24th, again, if, uh, if everything's looking good uh, in the market, again, you're a $3 million financing and a $16 billion a week uh, market, Ideally, we want to be you know, jumping in when the market is pretty stable and not, we're not seeing a huge amount of volatility with interest rates going up and down. And then the closing would occur uh, anticipated for August 1 of 2024. 
that's when you receive the funds to, to start uh, paying invoices or, or putting it in investments. So then page five, this is the, the long-term financing plan, and I think a lot of you have seen this plan in the past, uh, but the left side of the, side of the page, that's your net existing debt service levy supported. So that doesn't include your kid supported or uh, utility supported type, type debt. That's truly just your levy supported debt service on an annual basis. So you can see in 2024, it's 527,000. And by 2031, it's 368,000. By 2032, it's completely gone. You don't have any additional debt. So you're, you're doing a great job at paying down your debts at a, at a fast pace, which is good. This financing, you can see how it's layered in the middle of the page, the 1,580,000 for the CIP, that's gonna be done over a 10 year type, type period. So try and pay that down uh, as fast as you can, and a lot of it has to do with the useful life of the projects being financed for that part. If it has a useful life of 10 years or less, you, tr you try and you want to match up the useful life because you don't want to be paying on this debt when that project is, you know, when you're replacing it or whatever. So that's that's the goal there. The fire truck, you know, has a useful life ideally of at least 14, 15 years. So um, again, then we're trying to time that up to to, to match that. And then the streets, same thing. Ideally, your, your streets are going to last uh, at least 15 years. Um, and the same with the utilities. Then when you go to the right side of the page, you can see that that all kind of bakes into the cake in the existing uh, debt plus notes section. And then we take it a step further and say, what if you uh, did another financing in 2027, say, or the 2027, 28 CIP, and then kind of go on every other year type program to continue to get, get your improvements and see what it does to your, your debt profile over the long term. And so when we layer in basically a million dollars every other year forever, again, that's all hypothetical. That's all going to be up to you to decide. But we wanted to model on something in case you need equipment purchases, more street improvements, etc. What does the far right side of the pipe page look like? And that's where we're, we're trying to strategically have the, the debt service levy uh, incrementally increase a little bit to get to a point where you essentially level off with your debt service which occurs in 2029 at $772,000. So at that point, you'll be able to continue to fund projects and not have that debt service levy go up any, any further. So that, that's, a, that's ultimately what you are, are want to get to because you then can kind of, you pay down debt, you kind of replenish it and get improvements from the purchases, road improvements, et cetera, done. So that's, that's that piece. Then page six. This is, I think, a nice illustration for everyone to kind of highlight what I was talking about at the beginning of the presentation regarding the uh, municipalities are allowed to borrow up to 5% of your equalized valuation. Uh, the city has, has grown uh, pretty substantially over the last couple of years. So now the current valuation of the city is about $173 million uh, at the end of 2023. Assuming you grow at 1.5% every year, which ideally, is conservative. You've been growing significantly more over the last couple of years. But again, the last couple of years have been unique and anomaly. Is that going to happen forever? Probably not. So we try to scale back and be as conservative as we, we think makes sense, which I think 1.5% makes a lot of sense for, for the city. Um, ideally, you grow more, and this picture looks completely different, and you have a lot more capacity. But again, trying to be conservative in our picture, so what this is showing you in the black bar is that's your existing debt. It's the principal outstanding of all your debt. And you can see it goes down year over year because you're paying it down year over year. The green there, that's what we're talking about tonight. That's the $3 million. So that's layered in. And then as over time, you can see that being decreased. The blue, that's that million dollars being taken on every other year forever starting in 2027. That happens, it happens. But we wanted to model it in. The gray there, that's what your remaining borrowing capacity is on an annual basis. So you can see at the end of 2024, it's going to be about 27%. And then it continues to grow from there, you know, to 34%, then to 41%, et cetera. Um, and ideally, that continues to get higher and higher. You always want to leave, in my opinion, at least 25% uh, capacity remaining. And you meet that, you meet that category. You know, it's harder for smaller communities to be able to do this. A lot of the larger communities 
are using at least 50 percent, but they're borrowing much higher amounts and they're growing at much higher uh, pace. You know, uh, pace. So, um, you know, for a, a smaller community, this kind of gives me comfort, especially knowing that this is the financing that's going to cover 24, 25, and 26. Ideally, you don't see me until 2027 um, when we're talking about the next potential financing. <coughs> so, with that. I got a couple questions for you. Yeah. I guess um, when this is all done and then we paid you back and everything, um, how much is this going to cost us? Well, I you think for three million dollars, there's fees, there's you know, the, the bond insurance, there's interest, any commission you get, filing fees and all the other parts that go with, uh, what are we going to end up paying back in dollars and cents? Yeah, so on that page five of the presentation, in that financing illustration, mm -hmm. what that shows there is the $3 million in principal, and then you can see the interest at 4.5%. So, Essentially, you can see it's just over a million, million one in interest over that 15 year period. Okay. And that four and a half percent, that takes in the issuance cost at the bottom of that page, which layers in kind of you can see the, the project fund, the premium, that's going to cover everything into that four and a half percent. And when I did a quick calculation, it was about a quarter of a percent equates to about $60,000 in debt service savings. Okay. So if you can go to, say, the local bank for a 15-year financing and get, say, right around the same interest rate, it would make sense to do so. The problem is that's not going to happen right now. Right. So the public market is the best option, the lowest overall cost option, even though there are issues <coughs> cost type. Um, you're going to get the best bang for your buck for your constituents in this type of market. So that's all factored in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you kind of answered my other question on early on restrictions and early redemptions earlier. So, yeah. And where did we get? And I guess part of the confusion here is I I added up the capital projects listed on resolution 23 here, and we come up with $2,136,500, somewhere in that area, close to that. And we're going to borrow $3 million. And I, I'm trying to, you know, because we're going to use $300,000 of ARPA money for Oak Street. So that leaves us with $1.836 million that we need up for these projects. 500 is dedicated for utility. The one and yeah, so now we have 2.3 to 2. Point, up about 2.4 million with their utilities money, and we're talking about borrowing three million. There's a lot of undesignated um, wants. I guess Richard, that's your category. I'll let you speak. Those are those are the capital items that the finance committee has approved so far for 2025. These here. Yes, there are other requests out there. Um, yeah, also this money um, possibly runs over 2026 mm -hmm. capital projects. So we want a little, little extra there. So basically you're, you're talking $600,000 extra. Well, if if the ARPA if the ARPA funds are approved, okay. Well, we got to use them up anyway, and I think we well, well where they'll come later. Off. But the I know that we talked about this and talked about you brought that up too. We need to use the ARPA funds, for, you know, on a project like Oak Street because it's the easiest way to use the ARPA funds. There's less paperwork and there's less chance of making a mistake and everything else. So that you know, I, I'm trying to figure out where. The six extra six hundred thousand dollars is coming from. 
We do we have do we have a listing of that as an extra six hundred thousand dollars? We have a list of capital requests. Yeah, I mean, I think based on the, the full request, there's still over a million dollars that we didn't designate out that people have requested. And if we're if we're using this as a borrowing year that has to last us until 2027, if something happens and we need to have the money to be able to fix something or replace something or repair it, like that having that uh, undesignated fund is the only way without borrowing again, which we're having a hard enough time figuring out how to borrow right now. So I think that's that's kind of where we were looking at is having a little bit of undesignated money because we have to have capital projects that people request next year, the following year, that we have to try to space this out for three years. And plus the fact that Justin pointed out is that it can be invested at a higher interest rate than what we're borrowing at to for when these capital projects come up that need to be done. Yeah, and that's that sure. the period of time now. I mean, yeah. the Fed starts reducing rates, that, that may eventually... Not right now you have a favorable spread. Right now yeah. it's a favorable spread, yes. I think it's at 5.77% right, no, last month. 5.77%. So how would that, if we have this extra 600000 and I understand there's always more needs out there, how is that going to be decided? Um, have you set priorities for this extra money? Or is there a process? And who's deciding? I mean, I know that you went right now and obviously prioritized what was most important right now. So if we have 600 extra thousand, our department should, I don't know. How, how are we working that? I, I don't. Recall, I think borrowing so much extra, it just in case. If I recall, there was only one department that didn't have extra items, and that was the EMS. They requested an ambulance. So the other ones, all every other department had outstanding requests that weren't acted upon. We tried to cherry pick the ones that we thought were the immediate needs, and. There won't be any problem spending six hundred thousand dollars on the on the other needed need, and still maintain a little bit of a cushion, or go to another street project. I mean, there was one street project that was over uh, estimated to be over eight hundred thousand that we said no to. So I mean, that's already now our six hundred thousand plus some is gone. Right. So we'd have to do another borrowing mm -hmm. to complete that street project. So that street project isn't in this borrowing because that would be beyond this yeah. ability. So that. Yeah. We're not going to do that because that's beyond this ability. So I just, um, I don't, it just seems like a lot of money floating out there, um, undesignated. Yep. That's and that gets, and that's how stuff gets spent. And without, you know, everybody does it. Governments do it. Everybody else does. We see it at the federal level. And I think, if I remember correctly, if there's that six hundred thousand dollars, would you? Know, there is a there is something in section 67.12 double e of, of the state statutes that says it has to go to the general fund. Is that that is correct? Is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean the well, I mean it's technically general fund or even debt service fund. Uh, yeah. Debt service fund. Well, the, you know the statute says general fund. So that just goes into the general fund for everybody should, that, that can use it for the account appropriate again anyway. But which I don't know if that, so I then, don't know the statute exactly. So that money is completely separate. So any time that there's a borrowing, it's just not thrown in to like f and Bank or whatnot. It has its own separate account at the local government pool. Um, you know. Megan does a great job. I, I keep that all completely separate. So at any time or any time any funds are spent, you know, I take out exactly what's needed. Uh, the documentation is there. Um, you know, all that process goes through finance. It's, I, I just don't. Right, I can we're clear buy up your a car today, you know, type thing. And go ahead and get a car. You know, I can I clear up the confusion on this resolution. This is basically a boilerplate resolution, right. and there's it's not in here that the mayor or the clerk can decide how money is spent. Yeah. What you have is the right to sign documents, mm -hmm. and that's really. Uh, it, to carry out this, 
And so that's really what this says. It does not in any place say that they have the authority to spend it. Yes, to come up through the Finance Committee and then to the Council. So if there was any confusion about that, uh, I can tell you that's not the case in here. Who, who actually drafts this resolution? Yeah. And it's basically more or less the standard form resolution that they would use for all these tailoring it to the particular city. But this, uh, this in no way authorizes the mayor and the clerk to just go ahead and spend money. That's not accurate. Well, it, in, a, in a sense, it is because if we, if we, they, they only need 240,000 or 250,000, 2,500,000, $2, and they sign off and they, they put more debt on the city. No. It comes back up through the finance right. committee and the, the council to decide how to spend well, it. Well, once we borrow it, we owe it. That's true. Right? So that's spending money. Yes. That, that, that is one of my problems. So, you know, I, I'm big on the fact that I don't think just the Cowboy Council should give up their ability to justify borrowing or, you know, approving borrowing. It doesn't take much for us to do that. You can call a meeting pretty pretty quick and say, hey, you know, we need another two hundred thousand dollars for you know, the hailstorm that came through and destroyed half of Juno. Okay? And we could the council could get together and approve that that it would be signed. I guess I'm having trouble putting Yeah, it's more of the efficiencies, you know, the yeah. economies of scale type situation where if you're going through the process and doing this, yeah. um, it was kind of like, you know, in your example, if you need an extra 200, 300,000, you'd go, go to the local bank. But you're kind of stuck with the rate that they are going to give you, or the state trust fund loan rate, which is at 6% right now. So you're, you're paying a lot higher potential interest rate for that. But again, to your point, if you don't need it, you know, but it sounds like there are other things, that's up to you to decide. This, is, this was more of an efficiency um, to say you, know, you could get a lower interest rate if you do have <coughs> truly three million dollars worth of capital projects, which again is up to you as the council to decide if you've got that many projects. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. So I'll make a motion. Okay. Well, what? Resolution, resolution 19 2024 sorry, authorizing the uh, issuance and established parameters for the sale not to exceed three million dollars. I'll second. Motion by Foody, second by Evans. Roll call vote, please. Foody? Aye. Evans? Aye. Gratton? Aye. Moros? No. Moshka? Aye. Rungi? No. Resolution 19 2024 is passed. Thank you for not making me read all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been done a long time and we don't Thank you. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Okay, resolution 23 2024 approved capital purchase requests. Okay, continuing on, we have approved the borrowing. Now, we have resolution 23, 2024. So in anticipation of the borrowing, we asked the city department heads to submit their capital requests for 2025. The committee, committee reviewed the requests at our May meeting and approved nearly 2.15 million allocated for next year. Um, and I guess I'll just read that. Resolution 23-2024, approved capital requests using 2024 general obligation debt funds. Whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed quotes for each department's capital requests, and whereas the Finance Committee recommends approving the following requests. East Oak Street reconstruction, $638,490. East Oak Grove Street resurfacing project, $416,020. Northwestern Avenue resurfacing project, $209,330. Refurbished ladder truck, 2371, $428,109.94. Repair fire truck, 2361, $75,000. 
fire blows eight pieces of five inch by 100 foot with a storage fitting, $7,571.20. Squad car and equipment, $62,777.72. Police department server, $9,199.22. Tasers, four, $5,368. Fire station furnace, $6,260. Public Safety Building Parking Lot Seal Coating, $7,185. New Backhoe Loader Case 580SN, $94,528. Library Window Replacement, $97,560. Community Center Roof, roof Replacement, $65,990. Tennis Court Resurfacing, $13,200. Whereas the Finance Committee recommends using the 2024 general obligation debt funds towards the approved listed items. Now therefore be a result that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June 2024. I move for passage of Resolution 23-2024. Second. Motion by Evan, second by Mooka. Any further discussion? Okay. 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 Got a question. Um, the Northwestern Avenue resurfacing is that going to be uh, is that going to run from would that be Oak Grove all the way to from or that yeah, there's the Southwestern also correct twenty six twenty six to, to w. w okay Cause so it's not just north or south right it's also that there's a that from the Piggly Wiggly South yeah. and it's Southwestern Avenue that break is in there. Oh, first, yeah, yeah, but Piggly Wiggly's. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we hate to stop, you know, halfway down the street. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's north and south, I guess. From okay. 26 to W. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Evans? Aye. Mushka? Aye. Booty? Aye. Groton? Aye. Burroughs? Aye. Brungy? No. Resolution 23-2024 is passed. All right. Um, resolution 2024 talks about the ARPA funds that the city has received. Um, we talked about that last meeting and, and there was some discussion about um, dedicating it to some purpose. And uh, since that time we found out it has, Megan's done a lot of research on it and it has to be dedicated and contracted by the end of the year. And since these are federal funds, projects have to be identified and three bids have to be considered and one has to be accepted. The committee decided to wrap the funds into the East Oak Street reconstruction project. The bid requirement would be taken care of by the contracted engineering group. And decorative upgrades to the Uptown District that have been endorsed by the Plan Commission and the Chamber of Commerce would be included. So having said that, I'll read resolution 24-2024. Approve allocation of American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds. Whereas the Finance Committee has reviewed the need to allocate unused ARPA funds before the end of 2024. And whereas the Finance Committee recommends allocating the unused ARPA funds to the East Oak Street reconstruction project. And whereas the finance, finance committee recommends that at least 100,000 be de dedicated towards decorative upgrades to the downtown East Oak Street reconstruction project. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation. Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June 2024. I move for passage of resolution 24-2024. Second. Motion by Evan, second by Muchka. Further discussion? Well, I have a question, the at least, okay, so you're saying you recommend that at least 100, so it could go way up to the full amount. I mean, that seems an odd phrase in there. We usually have not to exceed an amount, right. but this says at least 100,000. We know there's about 300,000, so is there no top end to that? According well, to this, no. 
Yeah, right. so they could spend the entire but 300000 Yes. We didn't want to put a top in. We didn't want to say, <laughs> we didn't want to put a top in, and then you only spend $5,000 mm -hmm. on upgrades. So that's where we came up with the at least. The, the 100000 was figured um, based on the prices that uh, um, Jason Lau had provided. And, and you know, we, we kind of figured how many benches we want and how many uh, bike racks and planters. And it also whatever. includes the $22,000 that were approved. Right, last I month agree. Year. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, I think that it would, it kind of assumes, does, does it not assume that the county is willing to sell us? No. 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 We don't need we, any green space. We we're not talking about anything. Not, we didn't we account did not, for any of that yeah, in there. We did not account for the gathering place. So that would be. That's if that materialized, extra. that's where you could have the, the extra dollars. Yeah. So if it materialized, we're looking at a whole lot more than 100000 okay. If you include the gathering. If you want to go down those seven items on that email, um, the estimated amounts were for the decorative lighting was 23000 The new trees. Um, planters, thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Um, number three, twenty thousand for the colored concrete sidewalks, and then drop down to number five. Of you know, we're looking at three benches, probably seven thousand five hundred. And new bike racks, looking at three for three thousand, and new trash receptacles, six of them for nine thousand. And the last three items we figured just, you know, we know there's some there right now, but if you're gonna do a street project, it's best to make them all match. That's just how we came up with that 100,000. So you the, the new benches, the bike rack, the trash receptacles, you're not talking about the gathering not place it. at all? No, so number, number four, four is not off of it. Correct, yeah. 19,000 to color the concrete? 20. We change it to just come up with even a hundred. Um, and it may not be that. It may not be a hundred, but that's why it was hard for. The, we discussed this a lot of finance, and I hope I'm not taking. No, but ahead. we were looking for the right wording, saying we want to cover these projects, but we don't want to be shorted in case maybe one of them was over something. Am I stepping? We want. We want them. The, the idea of the decorative upgrades was to, we're not just taking all the money and burying it underground. You know, this is something that's going to enhance the uptown area and, you know, which is a benefit for people of the community. Yeah, I, I understand that that's, that's, you know, what you're, you're doing it for. I, I get that. It's just, if I was reading this, and I know that we have 300000 of ARPA money and it, it can be at least a hundred, and there's no outside and I'm just thinking that seems like an odd way of, of um, doing this. But and you know, my own my own personal opinion: a strip club at one end, a bar at the other, a county building that closes up at four o'clock. It's a lot of money. I, I I personally don't think that's good stewardship over taxpayer money. But that is just my opinion. Uh, so we did talk about putting like a at least but not to exceed range and capping it at like whatever we did roughly 50 percent so it would be a hundred thousand to a hundred and fifty thousand and then we weren't sure if that made that more complicated or more restrictive i think that we weren't like against having a cap we just wanted to make sure that then there was also a minimum so we didn't cap it at 150 and then only spend you know like i think that there's a reasonable middle ground for that but just because ARPA, I mean, ARPA funds typically are, are for like the things we wouldn't be able to do in a normal scenario. Um, ARPA funds aren't taxpayer dollar. They were give, gifted by the federal government. Like it's different, it's a different, it's the city of Juneau is not paying for it. So right, we thought we have to roll it into it. Taxes, taxes are taxes. Yeah, right, paying. but <laughs> if we have to roll it into, if we have to roll it into a street project, why wouldn't we roll it into a street project where we have the opportunity to make a part of the city look nicer? We can't do anything about First Amendment, about them having a strip club or a bar. Like that is just, 
We're what it is. I don't understand. You and know, if we could be a special family. project in the city, I just would not choose that one because I do not see, we do not have any kind of coffee shop, bookstore, boutique, anything that draws families to our main drag, right? You, you know, you're just, it, it, you, you got the pillars that have the spotlights on at night. <laughs> and, and so if you said, oh, we want to do a special project at the Wild Goose Park, we want to do something at Hickey Park because we're having all these families, you know, maybe that's an ARPA project. I just, that is just my, that's where I stand with, with um, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it will, will yeah. do much to the city of Juno. I think it's like a chicken egg situation because like do we improve the city so businesses want to come here or do we try to get businesses here and then improve the city you know I don't I don't as a, if I were a business owner I wouldn't want to put my business yeah, in a street that one. has broken glass windows and and uh, the garbage cans like falling down on the one side like I wouldn't want to put my business here right. I would want it on a, a block that looks nice so I, I feel like I don't yeah. know what you would... You see, I would say, as long as that strip club is the focal point of your main street. I think this could draw away from that, though. And for every reason you listed, Kay, is every reason I would use for wanting to dress up our downtown. Well, yeah, and that's, that's fine. That's your opinion. I, I think yeah. that the, the focal point, as long as that strip club exists at that stop sign with its pillars and spotlights, that is our focal point of the city. Are you from Juno? Yeah. Is that strip club still open? Yeah. I mean, I, I, so this is a start though to take away from that though and hopefully make the downtown more business, attract attract more businesses and make it more family friendly. This, this is just what was suggested through Blue Zones all these years. You, you change your downtown, make it more attractive yeah. and businesses do come. You know, you build it and they come. You can't have them get here and then say, okay, now we'll do something. You, uh, yeah. You gotta it, make it, it more attractive. And <laughs> the strip club is only open, I only see them open once, twice a week, if that. And so, like we drive them right, you know. Friendly. I was right. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's just so, her, you know, that's my assessment of the city. Any just, other comments? Yeah. Matter of fact. <laughs> All right, are we talking about concept B or concept B here? You got this thing that you banned it out? It's B. B. It is B. Is that locked in stone? So the county said we're going to sell you the thing tomorrow, it's going to be number concept A. No, that was accepted by the plan commission, suggested by the plan okay. commission. Okay. All right, the next thing we're, going to, we're talking about trees and the tree planters. Where, are they going to be situated on the sidewalk or in in the somewhere along the right away? Sidewalk. In no. pots. They're not fixed trees, Jim. They're potted trees. Okay. It's changed with the holidays or whatever. Is it? It's not a violation of our tree ordinance. No trees yeah. in the terrace. That's not growing trees. That's Who growing is, trees are what, I, what causes our. Oh, okay. are they are these trees going to be? Are they intended to? We were we were looking at uh, kind of how Horicon has those little like square things that they put like the little mini Christmas trees in, or like mums and fall, and they're just like you set it in a pot. The trees on, are in the thing. And who's going to take care of that? Public that works. Be, it's, that, I would assume the assumption when they huh? put up. Christmas. I would assume DPW. So we are we, we going to, <laughs> we're going to budget more DPW to take care of the. The trees in the pots downtown. I don't think they'll be able to do it during our yeah. day. I don't think we're going to well, bring yeah, anybody yeah. else on or anything. Like that. You know, I just I have questions. Yeah. Well, it's a fair question because I think DPW will be surprised. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to be tree. You know, I, I, I just you know you see trees. I'm thinking of a tree. Yeah. Yeah. It's Birding is probably shrub. Well, oh, yeah, I'm thinking. I, I, tree. I question trees too, and it's because not a tree that's going to go 50 feet tall. It's an annual tree that'll be planted this year and changed out. It, they're not going to grow in there forever. They're going to be changed out every year. And that was my what I got out of it when I asked. Who's going to do that? I, I you know, well, that's just, I got no problem using the funds for downtown. 
I have some of the, not, and, and I have nothing against the strip club. I don't care. I really don't care about the strip club, to be honest with you, one way or the other. We, the, the downtown has a history in this city, and some of you know it. We've done projects down there before, and there was no improvement in businesses or anything else. It, it actually has gone downhill since then, the projects we have done. We got, we got federal money for them, and they were supposed to, everybody was supposed to paint and clean up. Uh, we, we put the Blue Zone stuff, we put the planters out there, put the flowers in them, everything else on them. Not one business took care of those pots. And that shows you how dedicated they are. It was in front of their businesses, and not one couldn't even send somebody out there once a day to put some water on those flowers. I don't think that the businesses down there are that dedicated to this. I think they, they want the stuff that's going to make it look good for their business. I don't think they have a long-term goal for that downtown. Okay. I haven't seen a long-term goal for that downtown that says this is what we're going to do and we're spending a hell of a lot of money down there. Well, to be fair, I think the planters were higher that somebody with special equipment had to water them. These no, are they were right on the, the ground. Sidewalk. They were sitting around the sidewalk. Yes, I remember that. Yes, those I do. Yeah, because I got suckered in to help my wife plant those things in the water room when she had cancer. And we could not get one person, not one business, to go out there and water those damn things. You can't, you can't go out there to get them to pick up the cigarettes that, they, that were in them. You know, the dedication to this stuff from the businesses down there, except for spending money, isn't there. And that, and that, you know, that concerns me. Yeah, see, you can get some music now. <laughs> <laughs> we could go to 1850s and say, okay, listen to music. But, All right. you know, uh, and, and, and it's, I think, I don't think it's, you know, a good idea to spend that kind of money on an area that is not that dedicated to improve. Plus, you can't name me one store except for eight, or business down there, except 1850s, that's open seven days a week. None of them. Most of them aren't even open. You're lucky if the, if the bowling alley is open four days. Yeah. You know, there might be one or two somewhere in there, but you know, most of them, you know, we're not talking about a, a downtown where there is business, you know, late at night, weekends, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, except for 1850, none of them are open. All right, yeah. we have a motion and a second on the floor. <laughs> We've had enough discussion. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we didn't wrap it up. Roll call, please. Evans? Aye. Watchdog? Aye. Goody? Aye. Groton? Aye. Morales? No. Rondi? Nope. Resolution 2424 is passed. Anything else from finance, Richard? Um, just wanted to bring up in new business, uh, Pam was with us uh, because Megan had a higher obligation, but she presented bids for a custom built council table mm -hmm. and new filing cabinet. So that might be something on the back burner that you want to keep in mind. That's it. Any questions for Dick? So yeah, do we still have the coffin shape one? I know that went with the. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Next we got personnel. Okay. Yeah. Nobody wanted to move that. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, personnel met uh, in a joint session with uh, the utility, and we had conducted an employee satisfaction survey. 24 surveys went out, 17 came back. Um, as an overview, I would say that, um, you know, it's good and bad, a little mixed bag here. But um, the responses were pretty much, you know, positive about their workload assignment, pretty positive about um, the city using their skills and knowledge. Um, on the positive side, about the uh, city providing a learning and development opportunities. Uh, less so with um, supervisory support or committee or mayor support. Uh, and when pr problems arise, is the city responsive and understanding and handling issues? Um, that was a mixed bag. And um, yeah, would um, people recommend the city of Juno as far as a place to work? 
that was also a little bit of a mixed bag. So there were some very positive comments about working for the city of Juneau, and of course some on the other end. And as far as compensation rank ranking, uh, I asked them to rank uh, their wages, compensation, their medical benefits, their paid time off, and any rewards and recognition. So uh, I think it came out loud and clear that the items that they're least satisfied is their compensation. Uh, the items that seem pretty satisfactory are their medical benefits and their paid time off, and they are unsatisfied with rewards and recognition because we do very, very little of that in this city. And as a committee, we certainly discussed that maybe that's something we can improve upon. So um, after the survey results, you know, the most concerning issue was wage compensation. Then we talked about wage, the upcoming um, budget and wage compensation and the municipalities that we're gonna look to uh, so that we have competitive wages here in Juneau so we can retain our employees. And um, it was Hartford, Columbus, Waterloo, Waupon, and Houston. So next month or so, um, we'll try to get some more information from those municipalities to see where our city workers um, fall as far as uh, competitive wages. And uh, maybe we will need to make some adjustment so we can retain our employees. And uh, that was about it for, for that meeting. I did have a short meeting just before this council meeting and we approved a couple of job descriptions. So I think, here we go. And um, these came out of um, public safety and they're just an update on uh, detective and sergeant positions. So resolution 25-2024, approved job description for police detective. Whereas the Public Safety Committee and the Personnel Committee have reviewed the job description for the police detective position, and whereas the Public Safety Committee and Personnel Committee recommend to approve the job description as shown in Exhibit A, now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June, 2024. I would move for passage of Resolution 25-2024. Motion by Morose. Second. Second by Evans. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Morose. Aye. Evans. Aye. Moody. Aye. Groton. Aye. Machka. Aye. Rungi. Aye. Resolution 25-2024 is passed. All right, then we have resolution 26, 2024, approved job description for police sergeant, whereas the Public Safety Committee and the Personnel Committee have reviewed the job description for the police sergeant position, and whereas the Public Safety Committee and Personnel Committee recommends to approve the job description as shown in Exhibit A, now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June, 2024. I will move for passage of Resolution 26, 2024. Second. Motion by second by Foodie. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Maros? Aye. Foodie? Aye. Evans? Aye. Groton? Aye. Pushta? Aye. Rangi? Aye. Resolution 26, 2024 is passed. Anything else in personnel? Okay. No. Nope. Moving on, public safety, Jane. On public safety, obviously we have the your liquor license is on the agenda. It was kind of a short meeting that we had. Um, the beer and liquor licenses were reviewed along with um, just making sure that the city ordinance is followed with all outstanding debts. Um, the EMS Fire and Emergency Government gave their reports and that was pretty much it. Um, I have a Question for Jane. Okay. And then I have a resolution 20 2024 approved to grant beer and liquor licenses, whereas the city of Juneau has received applications for the following to sell malt, beverage, malt beverages and liquor with a period ending June 30th, 2025, as shown below. Class A beer applying as limited liability, Dollar General Store, number 
6775 Dollar General, 331 East Center Street. Do you want me to read them all or just the business and agent? The agent and everything you want me to read? You have to read them, okay. right? Okay. Agent um, Kelly Van Bendigdom. Agent address W204 South 10360. Cindy Court, Mosquito, Wisconsin 53150. Class A beer and liquor applying as limited liability company is Piggly Wiggly, number 304. Yankee Piggly Wiggly, number 304, 100 Southwestern Avenue, um, Wisconsin 53039. The agent is Daniel Yankee. Agent address is 329 East North Street, Juno, Wisconsin 53039. Class A beer and liquor applying as limited liability company. From June 12, 2024 to June 30, 2024 to July 1, 2024 to June 30. I don't get that. Why is it? Should it just be July? Or just be until June 30? Oh, they, they're they in the middle of an agent change. Oh, okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Juno 26 <laughs> Shell BMS Mark. LLC, 470 North Main Street, Juneau, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent is Shiva Sapkota. Agent address, 214B North Main Street, Juneau, Wisconsin, 53039. Class A beer, Class A liquor, cider only applying as a corporation. Quick Trip number 324, Quick Trip Inc., 210 South Main Street, Juneau, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent Derek Patlowski. Agent address 1199 North 4th Street, number 10, Watertown 53098. Class B beer and liquor applying as a limited liability company, 1850s in LLC, 1850s in LLC, 172 East Oak Street, Juneau, Wisconsin 53039. The agent is Christina Saramet. Agent address 532 North Lincoln Avenue, Beaver Dam 53916. Juno Lanes, LLC, Juno Lanes, LLC, 150 East Oak Street, Juno, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent is Brett Bowman, agent address N5665, Highway 151, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, 53916. Chef Chance, LLC, Chef Chance, LLC, 500 Lincoln Drive, Juno, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent is Chan Chamber. Agent address, 1226 Hiawatha Drive, Beaver Dam, 53916. Rolling Stone Pizza Pub, LLC, Rolling Stone Pizza Pub, LLC. 153 East Oak Street, Juno, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent is Tamara Christensen. Agent address, 103 Len Leonard Avenue, Juno, Wisconsin, 53039. Solomon's STR, LLC, 112 East Oak Street, Juno, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent Donald, Donald Raffalia, Raffalia, agent address 5615 Grandview Drive, Greendale, Wisconsin, 53129. Class B Beer and Liquor, applying as partnership, Simple Bar and Grill, Simple Bar and Grill, 160 East Oak Street, Juneau, Wisconsin, 53039. Class B Beer and Liquor, applying as corporate nonprofit organization. Juno American Legion, Juno Post number 15 of the American Legion, Department of Wisconsin. Agent is Jeremy Mason. 162 East Oak Street, Wisconsin, 53039. Agent address, W6566 Weber View Drive, Iron Ridge, Wisconsin, 53039. Whereas this notice was published in the Watertown Daily Time with three consecutive publications, Whereas the Public Safety Committee and the Juno Police Department have reviewed the above and recommend approval of these applications pending compliance with Ordinance 5.08.040 and now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juno accepts the aforementioned recommendation. Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juno this 11th day of June 2024, I move for passage of resolution number 20, 2024. I'll second that. <laughs> Second by Rungi. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. I have, I have a question. Oh. Our Class B liquor license applies to partnership, Simple Bar and Grill. Why isn't there an agent? Partnerships don't need agents. Because it's right. a partnership. Okay. <laughs> All right, Evans? Huh? No, no. Uh, Jay. Sorry, I'm Booty, sorry. Booty, sorry. I, I, I uh, derailed Booty? you. Hi. Rungi? Hi. Evans. 
Hi. Grattan. Hi. Carlos. Hi. Machka. Hi. Resolution <laughs> twenty point <laughs> four is passed. Anything else from That's all I have. Okay, moving on public works, Dave. We did not meet. Okay, cable T V, Jane. We did not meet, but we did a lot of brainstorming at the meeting before, so I'll just go through what we were um, we're brainstorming about and working on setting up a new broadcaster, controlled laptop, working to connect to the correct internet for both broadcaster unit and new laptop so that they can work together. Purchased and utilized a new external hard drive for storing city meetings. It came in handy when fulfilling open meetings or an open records request. Working towards setting up the two OWL cameras. They require downloading the OWL apps, the OWL Labs apps, which means having to log into an Apple ID in order to repurpose old laptops to control the cameras and regularly checking that second cable box that provides music for slides it will occasionally turn off which cuts off the music turning it back on and i have to um, thank david for his checking the cable tv he does that weekly to make sure things are working correctly and the sound is off playing and moving thank you jane moving on cda we did not have a meeting rick great Rec met, um, and we did uh, performance evaluation for the recreation director. And finances are in good shape. He talked about the resurfacing of the tennis courts will be included in the upcoming borrowing. And he talked about our summer activities. There's this, uh, sand volleyball, outdoor pickleball, t-ball, uh, outdoor fit camp uh, has started and some additional activities are being planned, some pop-up activities for the kids since they're out of school. And that was our meeting. Any questions for Kay? Thank you. Does, oh, was, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, um, is there like a summer booklet that he's doing or? No, it's all online, he does a, a newsletter, yeah. it's all online. Yeah, okay. Newsletter. All right. Moving well, on, the Utility Commission. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we, had a, <coughs> we had a meeting last week, and I'll give you some highlights. Um, the commission approved borrowing the 500000 for utility projects as part of our city, city borrowing that we approved tonight. Um, we talked about matching office hours with the uh, field employees. Um, we, did, we didn't take any action on that. Nick reported that the utility received the Gold Safety Achievement Award at the MEUW annual conference. We got a nice little trophy. It's on display in the utility office. Um, the electrical utility has been was busy with the cleanup and the recent storms. Uh, they had to deal with some <coughs> power up short power outages in town, and then they uh, also assisted Wapan, who got really hammered. The wastewater department has shut down the north sewage treatment plant and Stav is preparing to tie in the new oxidation ditch in the future, in the near future. Uh, this means that currently the plant is running at half capacity, but they're making it work. Um, the directional flushing program that was developed to address the chlorine issue in the water has been started. Um, they'll have flushing every every spring and fall, during the spring and fall months, and we'll see if it improves the chlorine, in the, the chlorine smell in the water. Oh, let's see, the commission went into a <coughs> closed session at where they approved new wages for the electrical positions after comparison with the five communities that the Joint Personnel Committee identified. Any questions so far? Good. So then I'll go, I got a couple resolutions. Resolution 21-2024. Approved compliance. First let me say the compliance maintenance annual report is required by the DNR to be approved, reviewed and approved by the Utility Commission and the Common Council every year. The 
wastewater treatment plant graded an A on every section and got a perfect 4.0 grade. So, resolution 21 2024 approved compliance maintenance annual report. Whereas the utility commission is required to complete a compliance maintenance annual report. And whereas the Common Council shall be made aware of the findings of the Compliance Maintenance Report as shown in Exhibit A. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau hereby informs the Department of Natural Resources that the following action has been taken by the City of Juneau. The City of Juneau Common Council and the Juneau Utility Commission have reviewed the Compliance Maintenance Report which is attached to this resolution and no additional actions are necessary to maintain affluent requirements. Passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June 2024. I move for passage of Resolution 21-2024. Second. second. Motion by Evans, second by Foody. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote please. Evans? Aye. Foody? Aye. Groton? Aye. Morales? Aye. Mushto? Aye. Brungie? Aye. Resolution 21-2024 is passed. All right, and then <clears throat> so the, the commission also approved Lori Runyon as an authorized signer on the Farmers and Merchants Utility Checking Account and the Utility LGIP account. So resolution 22-2024, approve facsimile signature. Whereas the city of Juneau is hereby required by Wisconsin statute 16.527 paren 6 paren B to approve facsimile signatures and whereas the City of Juneau and the Juneau Utility Commission have reviewed the following facsimile signature and recommends the approval of the facsimile, facsimile signature for FNM Bank and LG, LGPI Utility Account, Lori Runyon. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Juneau accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by the Common Council of the City of Juneau this 11th day of June 2024. I move for passage of Resolution 22-2024. Second. Motion by. I got that noted for the LGIP for the Common Council. Motion by Evan, second by Grant. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote please. Evans? Aye. Grant? Aye. Moody? Aye. Moros? Aye. Mushka? Aye. Rungi? Aye. Resolution 2224 has passed. <coughs> Anything else, Richard? No. I was just asked by someone a couple times how often we paint fire hydrants because they said they look like they're in need of being repainted. Just a question, maybe go back to utility. Go. So utility in charge of fire hydrants or yes, yes. no fire department? No, utility is. They contract that out. They bring somebody in there to sandblast it. It was, always used to be a summer help thing when they hired summer help kids to go around paint the hydrants and whatever, but get to be like bark on a tree after so many coats of Prussian paint on so that they actually sandblast them, they bring an outfit out that does so many each year, sandblast them and paint them right on site. So. Do you know the next time that we might be doing I do that? not, but Richard, you can, Richard, Dave, you can follow up on that question for the next time. Or if I'm talking to them. <coughs> Okay, any old business? Any new business? Approved provincial liquor licenses for 45 days. There are none. We ran Jean pretty much through the gamut. <laughs> Kayla, would you like to read the, the approved the bar, regular bartender license names? Oh, I sure can give it a shot, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> read them like you know them. And then, you know, <laughs> right. Like, well, they no serve, them, like they served you someplace. Yeah. Right. Right? <laughs> is this a question or is it just a list right here? Just read the book. Okay. Okay, so approved regular bartending license for 2024. Uh, expires June 30th, 2025. Carly Robillard, Charles Dinger, Jay Taver, Jennifer Doe, uh, Jane Hilgendorf, Erica Fredenberg, Daniel Yonke, uh, Janessa Knoll, Della Shop, Kimberly Pinkert, Lisa Berger, Jennifer Zimi. Andrea Stone, Andrea Stone, sorry, uh, Edward Spitz, Reno Kappen, Abigail Siegel, Donna Chase, Taylor Seabarth, Calista McDaniel, Sadie Gregory Utech, uh, Jeanette uh, Merkis, Merks, 
Marcus. Marcus. Uh, Stephanie Jacobs, John Hatter, Travis <coughs> Thorpe, Janina Butler, Gage Geneman, Tracy Marthaler Scott, Crystal Vitense, Brandon Steger, Kyle Main, Jara or Yara, uh, Sia or Sija, Derek Kotlowski, Ashlyn Peterman, Rochelle Muth, uh, Amber Passig, I assume instead of Amber. No, nope, that's her name. Amber? Amber. Oh. Amber. 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 It should be Amber, isn't it? Amber. It doesn't matter. Oh, I thought it was Amber. Yeah. Pretty sure. Well, we'll look at it. Okay. Because <laughs> I do know who we're passing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kylie Genrick, Rebecca Greedy, Grady, Carol Soldner, Sandra Smith, Elizabeth Hathaway, Ashley Edwardson, Heidi Brandt, Brenda Crokin, Richard Nails, Sakari Reinwald, Stephanie Cox, Ashley Raybal, 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 Donna Walter, Robert Pazzi. Uh, and that, yeah, that would be it. Last motion. Great job. Sure, motion approved. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Monroe, second by Rungi. Any further discussion? Say none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. No <coughs> other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. You got it. Motion by Rungi. Second. Second by Granton. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. This meeting is closed.